Well, Barcelona end 2020, the way in which, and, well, we've kind of seen them play for the whole year. Pretty bang average. They're going to manage a 1-1 draw at home against Abar. No Lionel Messi for this game. Uh, Coutinho and Dembele both starting on the bench. And no real spark uh, once again from Koeman's side. As, as Sidlow joins us uh, to reflect on Barca's what, final game of the year, Sid. So reflective, as I mentioned, of what we've seen so far, really. Yeah, and I suppose from Barcelona's point of view, and obviously, look, I don't want to overextend the, the symbolism or trying to try to see things where, where they're not really there. But there was a certain symbolism, wasn't there, in the fact that this year ended with Lionel Messi turning and walking out on the stadium and walking out on his team. And, and he must still feel that that's one of the possibilities between now and the end of the season. He, of course, was unable to play because of an ankle injury. He was in the Camp Nou. At the final whistle, he turned and walked. Barcelona, as you say, were... We're a familiar-looking Barcelona. A Barcelona who had some of the mistakes that they've had all the way through the year. Now, a lot has changed. Of course, this was a year that started with Valverde. It's had Kiki Setien, now has Ronald Koeman. But this still feels like a Barcelona side that can't quite get right. In fact, if anything, it feels like a Barcelona side that's regressed since January of last year. Things were not this bad back then. Sid, how could he not start Dembele? Or Coutinho, in fact, for a game like this without Messi? Well, I mean, Coutinho, I think I could probably understand it. Um, given that he hasn't performed particularly well and given that actually Pedri is one of the bright spots of this Barcelona side and give Pedri the freedom to play behind the forwards in, in the kind of role that, that Coutinho might want to do, I can see a certain degree of logic in that. I guess, as you say, though, with, without, without Messi, then you would think Dembele, although he is coming back from yet another injury, he made a big difference when he came on, but not enough of a difference. This is still a Barcelona side that feels... I mean, I'm not really sure how to put this down, but it kind of feels dysfunctional. It feels like a side that doesn't really know its structure, doesn't really know how it wants to play, doesn't really know which players combine best with other players, that's making individual mistakes, that's making structural mistakes, that's making systemic errors as well. It's just all the way through this Barcelona team, it feels like they have really... Very, very significant problems. Uh, you mentioned Lionel Messi in the stands for this time. It's the first time that we've had a chance to talk, Sid, since that exclusive interview where, once again, Lionel Messi actually said stuff. And it was funny, wasn't it, looking at the contrast between the Madrid newspapers where they focus on the fact that he was saying <laughs> Barcelona is a mess. Um, I would send that Vero fax again, as opposed to the Catalonia no newspapers that were saying, oh, I'm much happier now. And you know what? There is a possibility that I might stay. Uh, let's go for you for the mm -hmm. neutrals point of view. Your big takeaway regarding Messi's future from that interview. Yeah, I mean, in a way, my takeaway was that you could have got a piece of paper, drawn a line down the middle and written good news, bad news. And you could have filled both columns because there were, there were elements, I think, that if you were looking for, for certain arguments, and of course, most people were watching this looking for a clue, looking for a sense of, of being reinforced in their position, then I think you could, you could reinforce both positions. Now, let's start with, for example, the fact that he said that Koeman was a good sign and the fact that he said that the, the summer was behind him now, that he talked about everything that, he had, that had happened this summer in the past tense, that he talked about how he was happier now. All of that was great. And, of course, the fundamental thing in terms of the immediate news story from this was... I am not going to start negotiating with clubs now. In other words, he's not going in January ahead of time and he's not going to make up his mind now. He's not going to start talking to clubs right now. So that was the good news. Of course, from the Barcelona fans' point of view, there was also that sense that he talked about Barcelona almost in the past tense as well. The fact that the... I, I think the most significant piece of actual news, the real revelation from this, was him saying for the first time, by the way, and I really don't think he has even hinted at this before, that he would like to play in the US at some point. That's the first time he said that. He's talked before about wanting to retire at Barcelona, or if not, who knows, maybe take the romantic option of going to play for Newell's. Now, although this may well be seen as a semi-retirement or a pre-retirement, the move to the US, that in itself was a change. The other things that were bad news, I think, from Barcelona's point of view, is when you listen to him talk, he talked about the need to win things, to compete for the Champions League, and yet he also talked... And this is the phrase he used about a club that's in a very, very bad way. He was asked about the kind of signings that they needed to be a good team again, to go winning again. And he said, well, there's no money. Where's the money come, coming from? He was asked directly about Neymar. And he said, well, we can't afford Neymar. What do we pay for <laughs> P to pay PSG with, Jiv? So, so obviously, as I say, so you've got these two sides of this. You've got the good news and bad news columns, and they're both quite full. My personal feeling listening to this was that this was Messi effectively postponing the decision 
postponing the decision to the end of the season. I genuinely think he's telling the truth when he says he doesn't know what he's going to do yet. But I think when you listen to him talk, I think you can see that in his own mind, at least, the reasons to go are very powerful ones. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to, but they are very, very powerful ones. And time is running out for him. And I think that's another key element in all this. So right now, I, I think it's not great news for Barcelona fans, but at least it's not as bad as it could have been. So they just could have expected him to be leaving in the next three weeks. Just, just you know, Obviously, January the 1st is when he can start negotiating. Just picking up the point that you made about money, uh, it is, of course, being made clear that Barcelona would be a lot better off financially without Messi. Is it guaranteed mm. that they're going to offer him a new contract? How does that bit work? That's a very good question. Um, and I think they absolutely will offer him a new contract. I think they have to. Um, because of everything that he symbolises. And also, by the way, let's not, um, let's not allow ourselves to be sucked purely into the, the argument about how much he symbolises. He's still the best player in this team. And by a very, very long way. You know, he is still a lot better than everybody else in this team. And he's still very, very important. But I also think there is an emotional and, and if you like, a kind of a symbolic need to offer him a new contract. Now, there is, though, a difference between offering him that new contract and offering him that new contract and being absolutely determined that, come what may, he's got to sign this. That you absolutely need him to do this. And I think there may be some of those presidential candidates, and of course that's the other element in this, we don't know who the president will be, who will be thinking, you know, it might not be a terrible thing if he goes. Not least because, of course, the blame for him going will be always put at the doorstep of Josep Maria Bartomeu, whoever the new president he is. So the blame will be put on his doorstep, it will be put on Messi's doorstep, and probably not on the doorstep of the new president. So a new president may well feel, I can't really reconstruct until he goes, so it might not be a bad thing if he doesn't renew. Bear in mind one other element here. One of the reasons why Messi thought that he would be able to go in the summer is because he thought that deep down, even that old board of directors deep down, did want him to go.